top signs that your relationship with food is unhealthy now in this youtube video we are going to view the most common ones but stick with me until the end because i'm going to also give you the tips that are somewhat sneaky okay that you may not realize they're actually harmful and you need to pay attention to those so stay with me until the end but in the meantime welcome back to my channel sara here with love holistic living and in today's video i really want to start with diving straight into this youtube video i also wanted to make sure to give you viable content so please leave a comment to let me know that you've enjoyed it subscribe hit the like button and uh, before we get started i really wanted to share why am I I'm making this video? You know, obviously I've been coaching women for the past four plus years in this field, but the main reason why I am creating this video for you guys is because while I was in the process of reviewing my upcoming health cookbook called Manja, don't forget to join the waitlist, by the way, uh, in link in the description below, i realized how much you know women go through with their body and food and for me yes it when it started with an eating disorder it went into the binge eating but then it kind of got very very sneaky and even though i looked maybe 10 pounds only heavier than where i'm at right now after my binge eating disorder i still had a very unhealthy relationship with food and i'm going to cover all of that today but it was such a um you know uh, such a moment such a powerful moment when i was reading those pages and i can't wait for you to read this book as well with me so join the wait list because it's going to come out this fall all right let's get started the first I would say sign that your relationship with food is unhealthy is that you constantly obsessed about food. What I mean by that is that you cannot <laughs> go about your day without stressing, thinking, energizing the thought of what do I eat? What am I going to eat? When um, it's too much, too many calories, you're constantly like doing your math in your, in your head and it just never stops and so you kind of like are so exhausted because you want to get out of the cycle yes you're addicted to the cycle but you um don't think there is any other possible way to live your life besides this one let me tell you that there is but that was like i feel like the prison that i was living in and i was constantly like counting calories and doing math and it was so draining um so you're number one you're constantly obsessing about food number two you oftentimes binge until you feel um uncomfortably full now this is more of like what i call like a disorder because obviously there is the cycle of a diet which if you probably know at this point if you're watching this video there is the okay i'm on a diet so the restriction period then there is the um like you can't the you can't do it anymore so like you're uh there's the binging then you feel guilty and then you go back into shaming and starting the restriction again so the when you binge and you cannot stop that's actually pretty I would say like what I call the self-destructive behavior because you're really harming yourself. And we are going into something like, I would say like kind of heavy because, and, and I think you really need to know this and hear it because when I heard it, I was like, I'm not doing that again. But nobody ever used that word with me. And the word is, um, I was abusing my body. And until I said those words, and it clicked and I was like, I'm not gonna be the person who is continuously 
um, abusing her body. And it was hard to get out of. And probably you're thinking like, but how do I get out of this? Now, um, there is a solution. Obviously, I coach and help women heal around this. So if you're interested, obviously, you can always book a call to see if that's the right fit. But I want you to know you can get out of this. One thing that I want you to hear is stop harming your body. Okay, so I think you're going to do less harm if you allow to not restrict so that you can stop the binging and harming your body. Number three, you feel like guilty um, after eating. And that is something that for me was so present in my life. For example, eating a scone or getting a donut, getting a treat. And even if you don't work out, or if even if you do work out, sometimes you feel so guilty, like you can't live without beating yourself up kind of thing. And it's really unhealthy because you are worthy of living a life where you're completely free. And freedom is one of my main value for myself. And when I realized that I had no freedom, then I started like thinking twice about breaking the guilt cycle. Now, guilt for me is really big. Like for some people, shame is really big. For me, it was definitely guilt and guilty, like I, it, because I was kind of nurtured that way. And it's not easy, yet you kind of need to really gather your strength to not listen to that voice and to surround yourself with like positive affirmation, positive people, people that really show you what's possible in your future rather than your present moment, right? So don't hang out with people who have eating disorders, hang out with the people who will actually show you the solution, okay? <laughs> um, okay, so step or sign at number four is that you prefer to avoid eating around others. And I feel like this one was a sign that I developed like in my early stage because I would binge, right? So I, first of all, wasn't hungry during meal times. Second of all, I wanted to show people that I wasn't, I was never hungry, but um, in reality, I was hurting myself because then I would come home, I was starving myself and I would just binge on the most unhealthy uh, snacks of the store or my fridge. And it wasn't really like pleasant, I would say, um, all of those years. So what I'm here to tell you is actually do the opposite. Then what, when I realized the cycle, what I did was I did the opposite. I only ate when someone was eating uh, with me or was present with me. For example, I, at the time, I was a teenager, so I lived with my mom. But I um, really made sure that I was eating a meal and I was eating with people because I kind of like set some like boundaries and I said, okay, I'm going to eat at this time. I want, I want the accountability. And then, um, that will allow me to feel satiated and full so that I don't go and binge over here. So I, I actually seek the accountability at that point. And I think, um, maybe that could be helpful to you too. Um, the number uh, five here of the signs of unhealthy relationship with food is you've tried more than three diets and they never work. I'm not saying five. I'm not saying 10. Three is an enough number to show you that if you, you're continuing this cycle and you haven't stopped, then you're still in the cycle. And there's something unhealthy about continuing to go into a toxic cycle. Most people don't understand that it's toxic. I'm here to tell you that all of what there is, it's like being in a relationship with a narcissist. And if you've ever been in a narcissistic relationship, you know what I'm talking about because I've actually have been. And I can tell you it's the same damn thing. You go back 
to what we call the abuser. And the abuser here is the daye. Okay? So stop. You've got to get out of the cycle, not to remain in it and try a new trend. That's actually not moving forward. Okay? So number six of this is you continue to eat certain foods even though they're toxic for your body. And I'm not saying they're bad. I'm saying like literally they're harming your body. For example, let's just say that you go and get your blood test check um, and uh, chart and you um, come back with uh, your results that maybe let's just say you need to clean up your diet, you're intolerant to gluten, you're intolerant to, I don't know, lactose. One time I did my blood test and I remember <laughs> spinach came into the picture. I was in, like, I was intolerant, um, not, not allergic, which means that I um, needed to stay away, you know, away from spinach. And I remember, like, I think there was blackberries and cashews and soy and almonds and all those things that at the end of the day, I was eating every day. Okay. So it takes about six months to recover of a clean eating, clean gut health. And honestly, um, it worked. I mean, and I'm not talking about, again, your main intolerance. So I've been lactose intolerant for almost all my life, but I can manage it. Okay. I know my limits and all of that. I'm talking about like, when you really know you're having like a reaction, you eat gluten and you get bloated right away. And it's continuing to like increase your inflammation in your body and you continue to do so that's actually a sign of quote unquote being unhealthy um being in an unhealthy relationship with food okay it's the same thing it's like you're kind of like doing more harm than good and this needs to stop now the next one we're gonna go into uh, a few signs that are what i call the sneaky ones so i'm glad that you arrive to this point because it's one of the most important like point in the picture because these are the signs that nobody noticed nobody and they think that it's normal and women especially they're so proud that they're doing this but i can tell you right now that these signs are super super unhealthy so we're gonna get into the three sneaky signs over here and um actually we have four but the the number seven in our list is you're constantly fixated and i'm talking about fixated with weighing yourself every single day every day now it's not healthy let me tell you it's not about like oh i need to check my weight like when you constantly get on that scale and you're like oh my god i'm losing a pound i gained a pound and it's like you can't really see it in a span of time of 24 hours okay that's water weight water retention and things like that you actually if you want to weight yourself you weigh yourself like every month once a month but every day that's terror like that's terrible that's for your mental health i'm talking about so please if you're doing that don't do that <laughs> okay it's very damaging for your mental health now the next one is you want to reach a specific number in this scale what i'm talking about i'm giving you an example in my personal experience i wanted to hit 52 kilograms not 53 which is about i think in pounds it was like 110 or 108 but it was like the specific of it like i was like i don't want 51 i don't want 53 i want 52 that's actually not healthy okay like when you want to be at like why why not 56 why not 140 why not 143? Why not 150? Like, um, when you're fixated around like being at a certain number on the scale versus like, what is my healthiest weight? So when I finally started to heal, I said, you know what? I surrender. 
I said, I will accept whatever is healthiest for my body because at the end of the day, I seriously want to be healthy. And that is honestly when I started dropping pounds and finding like my balance because then I regained the weight. Okay. So when, when I finally found my balance is when I surrendered. Okay. The next one, the next sign is really being fixated, being around the 100 pounds. Now, um, and it's not, this is slightly different. So it's not like being 110. It's literally like you want to be in that like belt of like, I need to be around the 100 pounds because that I'm healthy. You tell yourself that you're healthy. You're actually not mentally. You're not healthy. Let me tell you. Like when you're healthy, you kind of like surrender to a point of whatever it needs to be. Because at the end of the day, I care about being healthy. I care about my body nour nourishment. And like if it needs to be, and I tell myself all the time, and I gained like over 40 pounds with both of my two kids in like a three year span. But I told myself, if I need to gain this weight, it's for the baby. I'm okay with it. And if I'm not going to lose it, I'm still okay with it. I ended up losing it. My body actually, I realized it worked out pretty well. And even though sometimes I still gain and lose weight here and there, you just surrender, okay? That's secret. And the last one, but not least, we have the comparison. So when you continue to compare yourself with your best friend, your friends, your inner circle, or people from the social media, that is actually a sign of being not happy in your own skin. Now, when you start to realize that you have your unique code of success and unique code of body type, then you finally start to let go of all of the BS of comparison because you understand that you can't really change your body at the end of the day. So you can waste all of your time um, wishing for myself, I'm speaking from my own experience, to have a, a pear-shaped body and bigger breast at the end of the day unless I go and get, you know, a breast implant, I'm not going to grow my, like, that's my body. And it stays this way most of the times. And I'm okay if it changes, but I want you to know that you need to stop the comparison. Like if you have a pear-shaped body, you don't have an apple body. If you have a bigger, uh, curvier body, you don't have a lean body. If you don't, if you're, your body doesn't look athletic, um, that doesn't mean you are unhealthy. You know, that does not mean that you're unhealthy if you don't show muscles. Okay, so it all depends on so many different factors. Just the more you appreciate who you are and you love yourself, the most, the more love you will shine through. So it's a weight loss from within to the without, to, to the out. Yes, to the outer, you know, experience. So I hope that this was helpful. Please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. But and um, like this video and a big ciao.